Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are playing through Kerr Nerthalus um, into the Midnight Throne. This is the uh, kind of starter uh, domain, and we've been exploring. Uh, we are currently in room number four, which was an altar in which we found some candles. And uh, one thing I'm pretty sure I forgot to do before was uh, roll for my armor to see if my armor deteriorates because uh, we used our armor in the last battle that we were in so let me go back to my armor here um, and where is my armor there it is okay so our max integrity is eight our current integrity is a six now I think we're gonna just roll this one time for the whole suit. I could be wrong about that, but I'm just gonna do it for once for now. Uh, now this brings me a good, this is a good chance for me to talk about, I, I rearranged things on the screen a little bit. I dropped Foundry, just gave me one last thing to deal with, and uh, I added some 3D dice here, so let's give that a try. So I'm gonna roll a D6, and um, hopefully I don't roll a one or a two. Here we go, and it is a two. Great, so our uh, getting hit by that, those uh, skeletons deteriorated our armor, so I'll go ahead and bump this down to a D4. What the heck? Hold on. I'm on the wrong layer. And it's too small. Alright. So our armor is pretty much what's keeping us alive. So, if we lose this armor, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Okay, let's look and see where we are on the map and what we want to do. So, uh, we've actually explored, we came up this way, and we kind of explored back around this way, and then we came up here. Uh, so, I'm kind of thinking we should go pick up this room three. Maybe there's something interesting in that. And then we could go down this cool stairwell. I, I really like this uh, isometric map. Here. It's pretty neat. Um, okay. So we will move up the stairway into this room. Now let me put a little X down here. To show that we've explored that room. And now we go through our exploration procedure. So roll for a room recorder we don't have to, we know it's a room we need to generate a description um, the descriptions are optional and um, it's probably really not worth it for me to have to try to find it but I kind of like it so I'm going to take the time to find the description Okay, room descriptions, D100. So I'll go back here and I'll hit the D100 and I'll roll a 70, oh, nope, 13. 13. F Echoes of anguished cries reverberate through this room as if the walls themselves are weeping for the tragedies that unfolded within. Ooh, that's, that's bad, huh? That's not good. Um, let me make sure I turn that off. Um, and I also need to... Yep, okay. Alright, so now we do a tension check. The tension is... I think it was starting to ratchet up a little bit. Our tension die is a D6. So I will roll a D6, which is this one. Shoot! That means our tension die drops down to a d4. I think something bad happens. Well, I know something bad happens when it goes all the way. We might want to think about camping soon. Okay. We don't do a lair exit check. We do need to mark off our light source. Now we did find some more some candles in the last room, so that makes the light a little bit less urgent, I think. Okay, so now we do an encounter check. We roll a d20. We get a, an encounter if we roll uh, 
over 10. Um, wait, what happened? Why is there a d6 on the screen? Now there's a d20 on the screen. Okay, roll a d20. 11. That is an encounter. So yes, so we need to resolve the encounter. Now actually this is the first time we've resolved, we've actually had an encounter here. Um, so let's let's look up the rules for that here. Encounter. Here we go. So I think we're gonna roll just on our the so the starter dungeon has a. Um, a special uh, enemy chart, so we're not going to roll on the regular encounter table. Um, is that all we do for a... Oh, well, yeah, I, for some reason I must have been thinking of some other game where there's like a... you roll to see what the enemies are doing and how they react to you. In this case, I think we just fight them, right? So um, let's see, where is that chart here we go let's see what we encounter I need to roll a d20 13 oh more skeletal horrors Ugh. well there's only three things on this chart so we had a, a one in, one in three chance a 33 percent chance of getting these skeletal horrors but uh, yeah so we're gonna have to fight some more of those skeletal horrors and they were uh, not great last time. Uh, I think this time I'm going to try to use my uh, Flame Blast more. That seemed to do pr fairly well against these guys. Um, so, okay, let's get this um, combat encounter set up. Okay, let's see if we can smoke these guys before uh, a little quicker than we did last time. Hopefully it won't turn into another uh, a little bit of a slog there like the last combat did. So first thing we need to do is roll initiative. So we're going to throw our perception, which is 40, against their awareness, which is 20. So uh, I'm going to roll for my uh, uh, perception here against a 40. And I fail it with a 68. So their awareness, I'm going to roll on against a 20, 29. So we both failed. I think that means, so let's see. Whoever wins, if either side rolls critical failure, okay, all the way if only your opponent has a surprise here. And it's blocking you. Okay, let's go back to the opposed checks rules. Am I missing? Whichever side rolls highest than the other without going over their own skill, if there's a tie of any kind with both parties failing their checks, for example, the character with the highest relevant skill score is considered the victor. So that means I win, I think, right? Even though I rolled crappier, I still uh, I have the higher score. So, okay. I'm going to say that's, I'm going to take that as a victory. Um, so I go first. Let's uh, just go ahead and blast this guy with one of our uh, our fire our fire blasts. We'll start off with that. So um, our fire bolt costs four and does one d eight. So I will spend four. Okay. I'll roll a d8, which I forgot to make a d8. Um, so instead of pausing right here, I'm just going to roll it. Um, an 8. So I think that means uh, on the damage chart... That means three points of damage. Now, we need to do hit location, which hit location for a humanoid is a d20. So let me roll that, d20. Nine. 
Okay, abdomen. Well, crap. Is the abdomen covered up by their armor? Let's see. I'm pretty sure they have some sort of... Nope, only chest. So that means all three damage goes through, which is enough to kill him. Which, yeah, that's more like it. So I just go... Blast this guy. Hits him in the abdomen, which is not quite as cinematic, but it's enough to kill him, so he crumbles into dust. Okay, so the second one is going to attack now. I need to roll a d6 to see what they do. A three. Means he's going to do that stupid ethereal grasp. So he's going to reach out with his hand, attempting to touch the essence of my life force. Target must make an endurance check. My endurance... And I will write that down here on my notes so that because I'm sure I'll be doing this again. But our endurance is 20. It's not great. Let's do a D100 to try to get below 20. Oh, yes, I did it. On a successful roll, the target. Wait. Uh, the target must make an endurance check. On a failed check, they take that. That. On a successful roll, the target takes half damage. What? Okay, so I still take D6 necrotic damage. So I need to do a need D6. One. That's no damage. So. It's like a skeleton. Okay, my turn. Oh, that reminds me of something I forgot last time I fought these skeletons. Uh, every turn because they are uh, frightening I believe is the word frightening I have to make a resolve check or I lose one point of sanity and so I would have at least <laughs> I would have lost several points of sanity in that last battle uh, but let's at least do it now so our, our uh, resolve is a measly 30 so let's go ahead and do our uh, number or D100 check to see if we can get under a 30. Oh, I thought we had it. 96. Uh, that's not not good. So we're gonna lose one point of sanity, uh, which brings us bumps us down to 10. Which, um, wow, this could turn bad really fast here with this sanity. Make that a little bit bigger here. Okay, anyway, it's my my turn. Um, I'll just try to smack him this time. So I'll make my shafted weapons roll, which is a 60. Oh, I missed it. Uh, so he will do his defensive roll, though, which is a 30. And, okay, good. He'll miss a 2. So I missed my attack, so I guess it's his turn. He rolls a five, which means he's going to do a haunting wail. The skeletal horror lets out a haunting wail that reverberates through the air. All creatures must make a successful re resolve check to be avoid becoming stunned. Ooh, this is not good. Okay, resolve is only 20. A real, or, no, it's 30, but still, I need to bump that up. Come on, low number, low number. No, 93, that's bad. Okay, so I am stunned. Let me look up that condition here. Pretty sure that's in combat. No, it's in conditions. Here we go. Stunned. A stunned creature loses their turn. Hmm. Okay. So he hit me with the whale. And I'm, okay, I lose my turn for one round. Okay, so that means he gets to go again. Uh, I'm going to say I'm not, I'm not going to roll for his frightening on this round, because I'm stunned. I'm, I'm not, yeah, okay. That's probably cheating, but yeah, sue me. Okay, his turn. He is going to roll a d6 to see what he does. Six, Vengeful Onslaught. The skeletal horror charges forward with relentless determination, targeting one creature. That's me. It makes a melee attack against the target, de doing D10 piercing damage on a hit. If the attack hits, he immediately gets to use... 
its ethereal grasp ability as a free action. Oh yeah, this happened once last battle and it sucks. So he's going to make a melee attack, which his combat skill is a 30. Um, so here we go, we'll roll against the, oops, first I gotta make that d6 go away. Nope. Now I gotta do a d100 against the 30. Okay, 84 he missed. I'll get to do my combat, uh, or I mean my defense, which is against my shafted weapons, which is 60. So here we go against the 60. 51, I got it. Okay, so that means I get to roll against the defensive moves table, which I have, actually I have that right here, which is a D10, and my D10 is this. Come on, nine. You get a moment of respite from fending off your opponent's attack. Recover two toughness. Sweet. Okay, get to get back two toughness. Why is my? Oh yeah. Okay, so I should be back. I should be at fourteen now. And it is my turn because he did not get to hit. Oops, screwed that up again. There we go. Okay, so he did not hit, so he don't. He doesn't get that free thing. So it's my turn. I'm going to try to blast him again with my uh, fire bolt. So that's cost me four ether. So now I'm down to three. So that will be. This will be my last blast this combat but I get to roll a d8 once again I don't have that come on big numbers big numbers ooh only a two uh, two is only one point of damage uh, first I need to roll a d20 for hit location um, I need to make that d10 go away first okay and then I roll a d20 for hit location this is a what what is that is that a five I think that's a five. Okay. Five is right leg. He has no armor there, so he takes one point of damage. He has three health, so he is down to two. So my firebolt didn't really do a whole lot. You know, I'm finding out in this game it's the the damage rolls are really important. And it's and it's frustrating because you because of this damage dealt chart. Like, you really have to get up there to do any kind of serious damage. Okay, anyway, that was my turn, his turn. We roll a d6 to see what he does. He does a four, which is... Uh, that stupid ethereal grasp. So I need, to do an, I need to do an endurance check, which is a 20. Holy cow, I got it. So that means I take half damage, and he doesn't regain any health. So half, he's gonna roll d6. Two. Two means he does one damage. I round up, so I take one damage. But we're going to go ahead and do a hit location for that, which is a D20. Um, my hit location is a 15, which is my leg, which is covered up by my armor. So that soaks up that one point, and he doesn't regain any damage. So, okay, my turn. I'm not stunned. I do need to do my resolve check to see if I lose any sanity. So that's a, against the a 30. Holy cow, I got it. Okay, that's great. Now I get to do a weapon skill against my shafted weapons of 60. And I got it. His defensive, his combat skill is a 30, so we'll roll that. He misses, so that means I hit. We'll do. We'll go ahead and do um, hit location for my hit. And there's a ten, which is his leg, which he does not have any armor there, and my um, phylum thing, javelin deal does a d6 of damage, I believe. Yes, d6 of damage. 
so that is this one. Three is one point of damage. He doesn't have armor there, so that just goes right through. Okay, so he is down to one point. Make that go away, make that go away, and now it is his turn. He will roll a d6 to see what he does. Dang, he has not just attacked me this whole combat. He does his haunting wail again. He's going to try to stun me, so I have to make a resolve check, uh, which is against a 30, which is not going to be good. Sweet, that's a 5. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I'm not stunned, so now I get to attack him again. Uh, I'm going to roll against a 60. A one. Wow. Okay, that is a hit. Not any kind of critical because of the way this system works. It needs to be a double to be a critical, but that's awesome. Okay, his defensive skill. Now, if he makes this, I am going to lose. Okay, no, he does not make that. So I hit him. So we'll do uh, hit location. Three. Uh, his leg, which he does not have any armor, so I need to make that, oops, wrong one, make that go away. Then I need to do damage, which is a d6. And now as long as I roll, don't roll a one, this is going to kill him. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Well, yeah, it hits him, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt him. So Okay, his turn. He's going to roll a d6 to see what he does. A two. Okay, he's finally just going to come out and try to slash me. So, uh, swings its weapon with an eerie precision dealing D8 slashing damage. Now, I think that means... I don't... Does that mean he rolls... I don't think that means he rolls his damage. His roll... He has to make an attack. I think it. he just gets a D6, D8 damage, I think. Uh, let me check that real quick and then we'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm going to go with the ruling that this is an attack. Because it the rules make it sound like it's either an attack, in which case you go through the attack roll against the defensive roll, or it's a magical effect, in which case you're going to roll some type of resistance roll. And so since this is obviously a physical attack, I think that means he's going to need to roll his attack. I can't remember how we played it last time. Um, okay, anyway, he attacks with a combat skill of 30. And he misses. My defense is 60, so I will roll that. 16, that's a hit. So that means I get to roll on the defensive move table, a d10, uh, which is this one. Nine, I think that's what I got last time. So I recover two toughness. Okay, hey, this fight is actually healing me up. Okay, that was his turn. Now it's my attack. I'm going to hit him again with my... Um, oh wait, no, it's my turn. I need to make a resolve check or lose sanity. Uh, so resolve is only 30. Haha, <laughs> made it. Okay. Uh, oh, make that d20 go away. Alright, so now I need to... My uh, shaft of weapons is a 60. Got it. His combat skill is a 30. Missed it. Um, he is going. I'm going to do hit location. Uh, five is right leg. So now here's the big roll. If I, anything but a one, and he's dead. Son of a biscuit! I can't believe that. Two ones in a row. All right. So once again, I've now I have hit both of his legs to no effect. Um, okay. His turn. He rolls to see what he does. That's a four. Stupid ethereal grasp. Um, I need to make an endurance check. And that's this one. Missed it. I take d6 damage, which is five, which is two points of damage. Um, how were, were we playing it? We were playing it that my armor blocks that, right? Um, should I double check that? Uh, 
Once it's clear that you have managed to hit your target or your opponent, I'm going to determine the consequences for this first roll and hit location. Uh, target, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I, I think I still roll. I think I still need to roll on the hit location. So, okay, I'll make that go away. Oops, that go away. Here we go. No, that's not what I need. Sorry. All right, here we go. Hit location. 19. Shoot, that's my head. So not only is my head not protected by armor, uh, because uh, that's my weak spot, I think that means it doubles. Let's see. Every creature has a weak spot, uh, considered an automatic critical hit. So a critical hit. What exactly does a critical hit do? Okay, 72 will tell me. Oops, sorry. Um, Here we go. Uh, da, 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 this means that if you would roll d6 for damage, you obtain a critical hit. You roll 2d6 instead. Um, and when you roll 2d6, I don't, you don't add them together. So basically, he's going to hit me twice in the head. d6. So here we go. d6 on the... What, why, okay, right, oops. Okay, here we go. First roll on the table. Shoot. That is two points of damage. Second roll on the table. Four, which is one, so I take three points of damage. So I'm down to 13. Okay, well that wiped away my gains, <laughs> my gains from the uh, from the fight up to this point. <sighs> okay, it's my turn. It means I need to make a resolve check or lose a point of sanity. My resolve is thirty. 16. I did not lose a point of sanity, so my uh, shaft weapons is still 60. <sighs> Missed it. His defense is 30, just in case he gets a move in, and he did not. He's going to roll to see what he does. A 3. I believe that's another stupid... Oh, crap! That's another thing that I missed last turn. His ethereal grasp hit, so that means he's going to gain regain hits so actually he goes back up to three so yeah we're starting this this fight with this guy all over so he's going to do his ethereal grasp again which means i need to make an endurance check and i need to actually make it this time oops wrong one wrong one here we go there we go uh 36 is a miss so i'm going to take d6 damage first we're going to do Hit location. Three. 
my leg, which I do have armor. So let's see what he gets. Two, which is not going to get through my armor. So we're good. My turn again. Resolve check again. Oops, not that one. This one. Oh my gosh, I've gotten so lucky on these resolve checks. Okay. Shafted weapons check. Uh, that's a hit. His defense is a 30. And that's a miss. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a critical miss. Uh, so, critical combat. I don't think that means anything for him. Um, okay, so I hit. Hit location. There's a 17. Hit location is a 17. That's his arm, which he does not have any uh, armor there. So, come on. High number five. That's two points of damage. Okay. So, that puts him back down to one point. This is where we were at before, and I just couldn't couldn't finish him off so all right let's turn four i think that's that whale now it's a stupid ethereal grasp okay so i need to make my endurance check nope not that one this one no that's a fail so shoot he's gonna get his damage back isn't he let's roll um hit location see where he touches me at is that a 10? My chest, which I do have armor on. Uh, so that means he's going to roll his d6 to see how much damage he does. Oops. There we go. Two. Not going to get through. Okay. My turn again. Let's see if we can finish this guy off. So, first I need to do a resolve check. See if I lose some sanity. Uh, what is that? <laughs> I'm going to say that's a cock to die. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I totally miss it. So I lose a point of sanity. But considering how sane I've been, that's, that's not too bad. Okay. Now I would, I would just like really like to kill him here. So let's see. Shafted weapons, sixty. Get it. That's a hit. His defense, thirty. Don't get it. Don't get it. Okay. Hit location, fourteen. 14 is leg. He does not have any armor in the leg. That means anything but a one and he's dead. Yes, he is dead. Hallelujah. Um, okay. Now we get to roll our scavenge. Actually, so we get another 50 points for another combat encounter. 50 experience points. So that means we're up to 100. Um, we get to roll on the scavenge table. Let's see if I have that here. Awesome. Oh, actually, no, we get to... Um, so first of all, what do we get for loot? Okay, so to loot the body, we get we get to roll on the spoils table. So I need to, oh, shoot. I need a d6 on that. What is that guy doing? Oh yeah, D6. One. Means I get to roll on the mundane items table. So I need a D100. Seventy-seven. A pouch! Yes! <laughs> yes! A pouch! The most valuable item in the dungeon. Um, some place to put my dagger so that I don't have to carry it all the time. 
Okay. Um, all right. That gives me five more things. Five more things. So, can I stick my bedroll in the pouch? Uh, I'm definitely going to take the candle out of my boot and put it in my... So I'm just going to say the dagger, the bedroll, and the candle is all going in my new pouch. Bedroom. Did I only take one candle? I thought there were two. Maybe I'll maybe I only rolled one. Okay. Now I think I probably need to. Do I have to put my pouch on my belt? I don't know. I'm gonna do it anyway. Try to make it look more like that size of those others there from my OCD. Okay, so that was, uh, I looted a pouch off of the skeleton. Now I get to make my scavenge roll for this room. And my scavenge roll seems, yeah, it's pretty crappy, 20. So let's see here, I could use a 20 here. And no, so we do not scavenge anything. Um, but that's it for that room. Now, um, yeah, I think for the next turn, we'll go up these stairs into, into the room number three, right? Um, but, I mean, yeah, this was a long combat, so I'll probably wrap this episode here, and we'll explore room number three in the next episode. So, thanks for joining me. See you later.